थ्री एंड नाइन एम एस वाई ट्वेंटी थ्री अर्निंग्स कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल एज ए रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन्स विल बी इन द लेसन ओनली मोड इन दैट इज एन ऑपरचुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंस ड्यूरिंग द कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एन ऑपरेटर बाय प्रेसिंग स्टार देन जीरो ऑन ए टच टोन फोन Please note that this conference is being recorded. We have with us from the management, Shri A S Rajiv, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Shri A B Vijay Kumar, Executive Director, Shri Ashish Pandey, Executive Director, and all general managers of the bank. I now hand the conference over to Shri A S Rajiv. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, and good afternoon to all. Today we have adopted our reviewed results morning, and we would like to share results of the Q3 as well as the nine months and the thirty-one call complete to to all of you, as you are the main one of the main stakeholders of the bank. and we would like to have your suggestions if any in future also whatever the corrections has to be made that also we are ready to do that just i will briefly explain the results of the bank at a glance as you seen that interest rates in the system has increased by around the 200 to 210 basis point during the 9 months period and more particularly 60 to 60 basis point in case of deposits for the current quarter same way the advances lending rates also most of the banks are increased we have also increased the lending rate at present our uh, mclr rate is around 8.3020 level this is the median of the banking system and we expect that the rates are uh, slightly another as uh, given by the indication given by the rbi governor two three days back there may be chances of that interest rates may be in the either in the same level or slightly to increase by another 25 basis point and thereafter there may be uh, chances of uh, reducing the interest rates that is the indication is given being that interest rate and economy in mind and our results the total business for the last quarter is increased by around 16 Percentage to three lakh sixty-five thousand crore, and total deposits is increased by twelve percent to two lakh eight thousand crores. Gross advances increased by twenty-two percent to one lakh fifty-seven thousand crores, and CD ratio is at present is seventy-five percent, with an indication that we, uh, by March we will be able to increase CD ratio by another one to two basis point. 200 basis point that is 77 to 78 level gross nba declined to 2.94% and net nba reduced to 0.47% provision coverage ratio improved to 97% and as regards profitability the net profit is increased by 139% to 775 crores as against the 325 crore corresponding last quarter of previous year operating profit is increased by 36% to 1580 crore as against 1162 crore last corresponding period net interest income is increased by 30% and net interest margin improved to 3.6% cost to income ratio is improved to 39.69 it is below 40% for the past 2 3 quarter and we will uh, able to continue the same level ROA improved to 1.30 percent as against 0.60. Return of equity is improved to 25 percent, and CRIR improved to 17.53 percent, which is tier one is 13.47 percent. As you are aware that the current CRIR, uh, this current year profit is not added. If we add the current year profit, the CRIR may be around 19.21 percent. So. earlier covid provisions whatever we have provided 1200 crores it as it is we have kept it and it is not considered for either capital deposit purpose or for provisioning purpose so for profitability for the 9 months net profit is 1762 crores 
as against 796 crores corresponding nine months last year. Operating profit also shown a growth of 15% to reach to 4,244 crores. Net interest income grown by 25% year on year. Fee based income increased by 8% to 927 crores. Cost to income for cost to income ratio is 39.48 for nine months. Return assets for full year is 1.02% for nine months as against 0.524 nine months under 31.21. Return of equity is also improved to 18.50 as against 11% for the last year. So during the last quarter, we have added 1.2 million customers and 62 branches we have opened to reach to 540 districts as of now. And uh, we have recruited around 1,200 employees as in the process, in the process because just other things are over. This is basically uh, for uh, keep it in mind the new branches opening and retirement and other way stages. As far as SMA is concerned, SMA is under well under control, uh, below 2.5% of the total uh, assets, including SMA 192. So these are the main highlights what we wanted to share with you and regarding the digital area i will request our edis up what are the initiatives we have taken for uh, past uh, one quarter earlier we have already shared with you and uh, regarding internal control and other areas where our other ed mr vijay kumar is there he will share so how uh, any sir, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, could you please repeat your last line, sir? Your voice broke. Yes, our digital area, there are good improvements during the last quarter. That will be shared by our Mr. Pandey. He is looking after the digital area. And uh, Sri Vijay Kumar is looking after the entire internal control system of the bank and other areas. So he will share the major points with you. Afterwards, we will have the question and answer session. Is okay, madam? Yes, sir. This is fine. Thank you. Are you over to Mr. Pandey? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, as uh, you know, already the brief, uh, uh, all our important stakeholders you have got on the bank's uh, performance in the business. So we are venturing and uh, towards the bettering ourselves quarter to quarter. We are just making all our efforts and endeavors in that line. Certainly, the, the technological intervention and the digital is going to play a two key role, as we said earlier, and we emphasize always. The first is sustainability of the business growth, that is quality, as well as the percentage or maybe the amount wise. The second one important thing is, you know, the embedded compliance. So you keep on having a well compliant culture and other things using the technology. So as you see, uh, that uh, the last quarter we gave and then this quarter also there is a slide on it, uh, two slides are there which shows the digital footprints and the, so key growth if I say UPI beam users from 2.49 million to 2.53, so it is a consistent and the transaction wise also from 3 to 36 mile to 352. The digital transactions which were 96.34 moved to 96.66 percentage. So similarly, internet banking users is around uh, move from 21.73 to 23, mobile banking 21.31 to 22.76, WhatsApp is 2.35 to 3.15 lakhs. So QR merchant also if we take 22.30 to 28.49 lakh transactions. So what we indicated last time also, and we are very much you know cautious and also very much progressive on the IT and digital intervention. So UPI, uh, on some of the identified things where we wanted to be more hold, and also we analyzed the cost is better when we move from CapEx to, uh, sorry, OpEx to CapEx. So similarly, you would have seen the, the various, the RFPs which are floated for last three to four months time. So UPI already one of the best player in the market has come in and we have started and uh, we are trying to close this project by March. The robotic process automation, again, one of the bank, public sector, 62 processes in which 48 are high complexity. So already it is awarded and one of the best of the, one of the best of the, uh, you know, the world. 
the player uh, which is now we can very well clear ui path has been intended and we have started so we are planning 5 to 6 uh, or 7 processes delivery per month so it is going to help me on three things as we said the first is the business which is the customer expectations and convenience the more business the second is the compliance and third is ease to my staff on ease of banking so the third is data warehouse we have already completed and the bank is well complied and uh, we are uh, already actually it is uh, working uh, you know for last one one and a half month we are using it for various our returns and other things the bank is on the private cloud which is nakshatra and uh, three to four cyber security solutions are implemented and three to four are in process even now so already bank is on the asset liability and the services side has planned uh, around uh, Uh, three to five STP journeys going forward, and similarly the fintech you know onboarding is also poised for. So when I say the upgradations, so the bank has also you know are having the advisors from IIT Mumbai and the other uh, arounds. So we are uh, having the upgradations of software, hardwares, UPI switch uh, already, EFT already we have done it, FI gateway. So in totality we have uh, started with the four. COEs as of now, one is Central of Excellence in Database, another is on CBS with TCS, another is Cyber Security with Inspira and the Analytics. And now we are thinking of on the recall side because it is very important uh, to have said, some well-defined sort of frequencies within the day on the reconciliation and the other. So with this, I only only like to say that the on the business side, how to have. Uh, to start with, say three to five percent of the business accruing from the digital side, moving to around fifteen to twenty percent for next two to three years time. That is one. Secondly, that cost to income certainly. That how the expenses, you know, with the change to digital systems, change to IT interventions or robotic process automation. So all those things, how it can be further uh, made to cost conscious. And third is the customer expectation. How to be met. Uh, with the technology, so these three, four, very uh, key, key areas which are going to support the bank in, uh, you know, for to all the stakeholders because customer is the important stakeholder. So on a customer service and better journey, the staff certainly because it is the most important. If ease of doing business is there, and they are deployed for the more better, prudent, and productive ventures rather than the 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 repetitive complexity. And the third is the regulator. So more and more regulatory intervention, which you make in the compliance, will help the bank to achieve as we progress with the business. So with this, I leave it to. Yeah. Good uh, so evening to all of you. Welcome to this uh, analyst meet. I am Vijay Kumar, Executive Director. Uh, as you all know, uh, Bank of Maharashtra, being the uh, premier public sector bank, we have been doing extremely good in the last uh, several quarters. at the same time we are constantly working in line with the national priority of keeping our technology and with the focus of customer centric uh, activities uh, while doing so we are focusing on improving our control internal control measures appliances and risk management in natural i would like to say from hr side we are transforming ourselves from government government karmachari to karma yogi This is what I would like to say. At the initial, we take up a question as and as and when it comes. Uh, not only the business, any other improvement, because quite often the question comes the sustainability, and that's what I made a you know small remark on that point. Thank you very much. Now we are ready to take on questions. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Ashok Ajmera from Hcon Global Services Limited. 
please go ahead uh thank you for giving me this opportunity of asking the first uh, question i have few questions and observations and i request uh, the moderator to please do not cut me unless i complete at least those two three questions and some observations thank you very much now i start sir uh, my com compliments to you sir uh, the md and ceo and both the eds and the entire team of the top management of the bank for the fantastic performance quarter after quarter and this quarter uh, you know you are uh, profit before tax is touching to almost 1000 crore for a quarter uh, on other parameters also if you see the i think one of the best uh, 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 net npa figure in the i think uh, the entire public sector bank of 0 0.47 even uh, even the growth uh, npas are under very much control repages are under control your name is growing um, quarter after quarter i think 3.6 or something even in this quarter and the asset quality has been improved to that extent of uh, i think one of the highest provision again of uh, almost about how much 97 percent so my compliments to you sir on all these uh, parameters i think your bank uh, uh, if, if one do not consider the size among the public sector bank uh, uh, which also is now almost 365,000 crore can be said as one of the best performing banks among the, especially among the public sector bank, and it can it can match with any other uh, private uh, sector bank also. Sir, I have a few, few just a few observations and some questions. Uh, I would have liked to have some clarity on the calculation of the net worth at various places in the results also in the balance sheet. So. Uh, like you know the net worth of 12,699 crore is said there in the results point number 711 where if you add up the profit and everything uh, it doesn't come to that level uh, it, it is rather higher so if you take the net worth of uh, the equity of 6730 and the reserves without the profits of this year of 5577 it becomes 12,370 12,307 crore and if you take the profit of three quarters of 1,752, it comes to 14,069. But if you look at the balance sheet, uh, again, there the uh, reserves and surplus and capital, if you add up, it is 15,644 crores. Uh, even again, in your own uh, uh, note, so what I would like to, like if somebody who has done the uh, calculation of this net worth of the bank at various uh, places, different thing, if somebody can explain me or, or can send me the details a little later also, I don't uh, mind about that. Uh, sir, uh, my second uh, one is that the, uh, there was, there, there is an SR and I am asking a bit uh, that I, I hope it is 100% provided for 197 crores of uh, this pending SR, note number 12.4. And I would also like to know on the accounts required, you know, 1,916 crore in this quarter uh, with tangible security of only 24.91%. So what kind of accounts these are? Uh, because the accountability of the person from whom we bought this account is, I think, about 10 or 11% uh, which he is holding. So I would like to have some some clarity uh, clarity on this. And, sir, on the, if I look at the uh, uh, segment-wise uh, results, then our treasury income has come down to 34 crore, from, uh, rather profit, has come down to 34 crore as against 105 crore in the last quarter. And the wholesale book profit has gone to 676 crore against 487 crore. While the retail banking, it has again gone down to 280 crore against 326 crore. So if some, some explanation can be given uh, that uh, uh, because of the provisioning or because of what uh, because corporate book has just increased now in this quarter to seven by seven percent, but how much? Uh, why this anomaly uh, in this segment-wise uh, uh, profitability? I would like to know. I would like to compliment on Casa, which is of course uh, going 52.5 percent, which is not a less as compared to the other bank, but it has come down from 56.27 percent in the last quarter. So, any specific reason for that? Uh, uh, if if it can be explained and going forward. Where do we see uh, uh, the CASA to be? Because it is the one which is giving you the maximum yield and uh, uh, maximum profit. I would also like to appreciate here that while the yield on advances has gone up to 8.28% from 7.81%, uh, which is almost 19 plus 28, uh, it's almost about 50 basis point, whereas the cost of funds have gone up only 
to 3.61 percent from 31.31 percent. That is only 30 basis points. So, which is another good point uh, for the bank. So, sir, some of these issues uh, and one on the uh, provisions for taxation. You know, which is in spite of the profit going up, the taxes provision has come down to 223 crores from 348 crores in the last quarter. Uh, if time permits later, I would uh, like to discuss something about the advantage and the credit credit go growth going forward. Uh, thank you, sir. I think, um, Asnada Ji, this, uh, regarding this network, we will give you the detailed workings to you, mainly because of revaluation reserves and other things. Okay. Maybe uh, it may be because some of the area revaluation, for example, uh, the share, book value of the share, some of the areas, revaluation reserves have to be reduced. And in case of rapid adequacy, also we have to change the revaluation reserve 55,000 only. So that may be the reason, but uh, that our CFO will be in touch with you and give it. Regarding SR and other things, as per the valuation, 100% provision we have made, and there is no issue. Treasury yield is come down mainly because of the profit on sale of securities, because of the increase in interest rates. Last quarter, only small amount, only 8 to 30 crore was the uh, treasury profit has come, uh, happened. And uh, in case of other income, we have changed the accounting methodology also. Uh, earlier, uh, commission on guarantees and other things. Earlier, it was on cash basis. This year onwards, we have converted to accrual basis. So the other income has come down by around 30 crores during the current year. So that is only accounting aspects. Regarding CASA, CASA is around 52.5%. Of course, you, you are well aware that in the highly increasing interest rate scenario, there is a shift from deposit, cam deposit shifting is there. But here, CASA, we will be, we will be able to contain the CASA for CASA as it is at the rate of 52.5. So generally, 3 to 4 percent uh, government deposits and other corporate deposits are there, generally because of the higher interest rate. Government deposit and corporate deposit, we have written to them deposit, but otherwise, CASA rate as per 52 to 53 percent, we will be able to continue the coming uh, going forward also. Regarding taxation for the next two to three years, bank may not provide any tax, but however, as a precaution, we have kept some DTA, we have reversed, and we have kept for some 200 300 crores because we have more than 15 to 20,000 crores. Uh, laws created for the past two years. It is continuing in the books. So two to three years, there will not taxation will not come. But we have kept some amount for taxation purpose in for futuristic purpose. So otherwise, uh, this can be considered as a profit also. So we will be in touch with you and we will give you our CFO, Mr. Srivastava will give the detail working on your network as well as other areas wherever regarding treasury also, we will be given giving to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll come back again. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to answer questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sunny Agarwal from SPI Cap Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question pertains to uh, the sector or corporates. Uh, from which sectors we are seeing a healthy uh, credit demand for us? Uh, and uh, uh, in the current, uh, uh, I mean, uh, rising interest rate scenario, where do we see a uh, mean panning out, especially for the corporate on, uh, on our corporate book? So that is the first question. And my second question pertains to the uh, customer base. So. Uh, I believe we, are, we we will be uh, we are adding few customer on current account and uh, saving account side. So uh, it can throw some light on what what kind of customer or salary account we are adding, especially in a hyper competitive environment where everyone is chasing those uh, uh, casa uh, uh, in the rising uh, cost of deposit scenario. Thank you. So, so this uh, first question is regarding corporate and I am and I am of the corporate on an average two percent and I am we are getting from the corporate and uh, we have not got I'm sorry to interrupt sir. sir sir can you please begin again I mean like yes. your voice broke a little bit I'm so sorry, first question is regarding and I am on corporate book 
and the corporate book nim is around 2.75 to 3% nim is from the corporate book and uh, so that yield is comparatively good and we have not gone for any uh, low interest rate scenario any of the accounts we have not gone for uh, cases so the average yield is good and regarding current account and sb account mainly the salary accounts and other things uh, uh, we are getting state wide for example one one example i can tell you that we are having a tie up with some of the state governments and other things and the salary accounts as well as their loan accounts like a housing loan account like that we are getting plus we are snna accounts is the major area of our source that is we are having so many state government and if we are continue to our team is very strong government government department team in delhi as well as in mumbai and different state head of the states we our team is very strong it is a strong force of around 250 to 300 people are working for that so for this that is the major area of uh, benefits is coming from current account and sb so these are mainly sna accounts and corporate accounts as well as the salary accounts thank you okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, just uh, uh, so which are the sectors from where we are uh, are seeing a healthy credit demand or loan demand? Which are the industries uh, which which we are planning to lend over the next twelve to eighteen months? I think our GM credit will uh, give you that data. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, we are seeing good demand from all the sectors, uh, be it infra or manufacturing. So there is no dearth of good proposals. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Then all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of M B Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. So could you give us an update on the N A R C L um, and also if there has been um, any further traction on recoveries and upgrades on the corporate side? Yes, our G M recovery will give you that. Yes, uh, this N A R C L, uh, as you know, that shortlisting has been done. For our bank, 13 accounts are already shortlisted around 2,700 crore. Now that guarantee issue is also resolved because uh, the government has given the approval about this guarantees of ESA, and now that work of actual transferring the account to NRCL has been started. So we expect uh, that within this week, uh, the first account will be transferred to NRCL, uh, and then the things will move. Okay. And and Yeah, and the visibility of recovery, sir. Other than the N R C L recovery, sir, as you already uh, noticed, that uh, we are at the lowest G M P N and N P A, and now it's a challenge to maintain that level below three and below five point five. So recovery is uh, in this quarter. We expect at least five hundred crore recovery in the right of account, and uh, almost equivalent reduction uh, in the N P A. Okay, perfect. Sir. Done. Thanks. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Shridhar Sivaram from Inam Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, so my question is on the credit cost and the provisioning uh, for a bank which has 97% coverage and more than 1,000 crores of provisioning. Uh, the first nine months uh, credit cost is 1.6, and even for the third quarter it is 1. almost 4. so some guidance on uh, uh, on provisioning going forward uh, we've seen credit costs coming off for many of the other psu banks uh, you may be prudently continue to provide very high but uh, if you could uh, help us with some guidance on how to look at it for the next year so credit cost we expect sir it will come down to 1% by next year so this is 1.4% this come basically because for us uh, Small amount is utilized for reducing the uh, net NPR ratio because earlier last quarter it was 0.68 was there. Now it is come to 0.47. So now for going forward, we have reached our target below 0.5. Now in and around this net NPR will continue in the same level, 0.4 to 0.5 level. So there will not be any requirement for credit provisioning for reducing the net NPR. Otherwise, our addition is coming. uh only 572 crore is the last quarter added and the recovery is almost in the same level so there will not be any additional credit 
require credit uh, provisioning requirement is not there actually it is on maximum 100 crore or 190 crore something small amount only will come so that will continue next year also but we expect that up to 1000 credit cost is always is better uh, to keep in mind sir 100 200 crores and 1% there is uh, almost 1500 crore difference uh, so you are throwing numbers like uh, 1% we want to keep so uh, the the range you are talking is so wide uh, so it will help us uh, uh, if you can give some reasonable number because uh, uh, you know you will you will do almost 2 lakh crores of say uh, loan book next year uh, 1% would uh, almost mean uh, you know uh, almost 2000 crores so should we expect around 1000 crores of credit cost next year is that a reasonable number so that uh, as, as a uh, conservative way only i'm telling that for one percent maximum okay that seems like a very conservative number sir you can you can reduce the numbers there is no problem i am telling the outer limit and uh, you have to see that uh, we are keeping that in ratio 0.47 and to bring down the debt ratio, uh, you you are required to make project uh, more than RF now. So that's why uh, Sir has taken that into consideration. Yes. Okay. My other question is you mentioned about tax also, that uh, you have uh, uh, substantial losses uh, which are carry forward and you don't need to provide tax. So what sort of number should we model for next year? Uh, if you could help with uh, some number that will help because both the provisioning and the tax numbers are they are varying so much that it is very difficult to make any uh, forward estimates uh, uh. so if you could help us with some tax number what should we what what sort of what percentage or what absolute number should we keep for tax is uh, 500 or 1000 crores a reasonable number for the full year next year or some sort of guidance will help yeah uh, I'm CFO here. Yeah. Uh, you see that uh, whatever tax project we have made, it is not the tax, actual tax levy, it is a DT reversal. So we were having, we have created DT on the disallowed provision, and we, when we have written off from that, so we have reversed that DT. And this DT reversal of DT will help us in improving CRR during the quarter, and if the profit can added during the quarter. So uh, one thing is that DT reversal we are using for improving the CRR. Uh, during the quarter. Secondly, that we are holding 10,000 crore losses and uh, uh, whatever the, our uh, profit projection for uh, two years, we don't expect that there will be any actual credit tax liability. Uh, having said that, there may be some detailed de 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 uh, reversal to improve this area. But should we expect about 500 crores of DTA reversal uh, coming in next year? Uh, it would be on lower side. It could be on lower side. Okay, that will help, sir. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Jay Mundra from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Mundra, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. Yeah, hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. Please go yeah. ahead. Sir, on uh, wage revision hike, have you started providing on the bipartite and what is the uh, uh, salary growth that you are estimating? Uh, uh, CFOR, uh, that we are expecting 15% uh, wage revision and accordingly 32 crore we have provided uh, during this quarter. Omar is for two months. That's so this 32 crore is for two months, right? Right. Yes, yes. At 16 crores per month, right? That is the max. Right. And, and okay. Um, and secondly, uh, so this, you said at 15% at you provided, right? Yeah. Okay. And secondly, sir, uh, on, uh, it looks like the standard assets provisioning has been negative in third quarter. Is it because restructuring loans are slipping or, you know, otherwise what would cause this standard assets negative provisioning because you are growing your assets reasonably well? Some of the, the restructure that 
uh, it has become the standard also. So for that we need not to make the provision. And what is this? If the some uh, restriction has slipped, in that case the restriction will be written back. That is the case. Uh, and this. Even this restriction, which have become standard. Now it, it is no longer to provide restriction provision. So accordingly we have written back the restriction provision. Right, so maybe the first restructuring, these people, the two years term has got over, right? And that is how they are turning back into a standard standard. Yes, yes. Right. Okay, and secondly, uh, and sir, on your loan mix by benchmark, so how much is repo link, how much is T-bill, and how much is MCLR, if you have that number for your loan book? But our, uh, out of the total loan book, 43% is our uh, available means repo link rate and remaining 57% is the MCR link rate. Uh, and sir, you would have something on gold etc. also, right? Which is fixed rate or that is like negligible? That is linked to repo. Okay, gold loan also? Yes, yes. Yeah, actually fixed we do not have as such in the portfolio. Right, okay. So last question, sir, on your EBLR, right? So when you had started this EBLR, what was your reset timeline? And can you change the reset timeline for a customer who is on repo rate? So if someone who has taken a home loan at, let's say, repo plus spread, and his uh, reset was initially, what was the reset period? Was every month, every quarter, um, and has that been changed also? Repo link rates are linked to the repo only. So whenever right. there is a change in the repo, the rate of interest undergoes change. But when would it be effective? So let's say, you know, RBI 7 December. The repo, the same day it will be effective. Even from the beginning of this regime, right? You would have almost immediate basis. That is the basic concept of the repo link rates. As the repo changes, so we have to pass on. We have to pass on the benefit and uh, to the customer. So no, I understand that, sir. What I was asking is, uh, does this changes overnight to every customer, or yes, let us say, it is applicable to all customers who are linked to repo based lending. Right. Okay. Understood, sir. Yeah, that is all from my side, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Deepak Pudar from Safari Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yep. Um, thank you uh, very much uh, for the opportunity and a wonderful set of numbers. Uh, so many congratulations for that. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, know now you, uh, one point you mentioned was about 500 crores of recovery you are expecting uh, from a written off account, right, uh, in this quarter itself. So, so ideally, um, uh, that uh, uh, that um, effectively means that you will have that. Uh, I mean, the neutral provisioning, right? I mean, we are currently doing 500 crores per quarter, and we are, if we if we kind of recover that amount, or or, or you are planning to reduce the net NPS from that amount? Uh, yes, that uh, recovery uh, uh, is um, uh, in right of account. 500 crore is uh, definite there. Uh, we expect uh, in this Q4. Uh, with this, of course, uh, uh, it will be useful for uh, both ways uh, because that is direct profit, as you know. Uh, so how we uh, use it uh, for uh, because the uh, net NPA as we have reached to 0.47 level. Mm -hmm. So now uh, it is, I think, the idealistic level uh, which we have to maintain uh, over a period. So a lot depends upon uh, how the slippages work accordingly. Uh, we'll plan. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so that effectively means our credit cost can be uh, much below one percent, right? Uh, as we go into fourth quarter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lot depends, sir. Uh, what you say, uh, we also expect, but uh, we yeah. always conservative. Yeah, of course, we should be conservative. Um, uh, sure, I understood that point. And and what sort of recovery we are expecting next year, FI24? Ah, FI24, sir, again, uh, the 13 accounts are uh, uh, mm -hmm. lined up with NARPL. Mm -hmm. So that will keep happening now in uh, next uh, year. Uh, the big account 3 also, that is uh, in NCLT, which is already NARCL only bidding. Uh, so, like where uh, some big accounts will come. 
so in the same line, uh, we'll uh, keep our GNP and NNPN accordingly. Uh, we'll uh, at least see that my recovery and upgradation is this is our aim to uh, be at least not more than, but at least equal to the slippages. No, uh, equal to the slippages. Okay, understood. And and my second question is uh, around your growth. I mean, uh, uh, we were expecting around 24, 25% growth this year, right? And and we are, uh, I mean, uh, currently at 22%, right? So so largely in line what we have been guiding. Yes, yes. Our uh, target is uh, 20 to 22% growth under advances and. Uh, uh, 12 to 13 percent under uh, deposits. Okay, and then what sort of uh, growth we are looking next year? Next year also uh, around the 18 to 20 percent we are expecting next year because when the balance sheet size is increasing, definitely one to two percent uh, growth rate may come down. Fair enough. I I, I got it. Yep, that's it from my side. All the very best, sir. Thank yes, you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Mangesh Kulkarni from Almonds Global Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Kulkarni, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. Yeah, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Sir, I just wanted to know, today's media uh, paper suggests that uh, we are looking uh, uh, for fundraising and uh, appointing the merchant banking. So, uh, what kind of timeline we are looking? Will it be in the sec first quarter or second quarter of FY24 or later on? Uh, you have rightly heard about the uh, capitalism plan of the Bank of Maharashtra. Uh, recently, we have come with the RFPs for selection the BRLM, and what we are planning that in uh, first or second week of February, we will hit the market. We intend to raise 1,000 crore uh, capital. Okay, sir. And uh, in terms of our uh, provincially written of accounts, what will be the quantum on which we will be sitting, and uh, what kind of recovery targets we are looking from that? Yes, uh, prudential write-off, uh, uh, we are told that 500 crore we are expecting recovery uh, in this uh, quarter, Q4. So what what is the total outstanding uh, count, quantum which is, is there? Around 18,000 uh, crore, uh, uh, that quantum is. So if we are going forward also, we will be looking similar kind of run rate in every quarter, uh, around 500 crore. So we uh, we uh, keep our aim like that only. Uh, okay, sir. Yes. And uh, slippages also you are guiding similar what uh, equal to or uh, this thing uh, like uh, upgrade and recovery will be equal to the slippages, right? That is again our aim. Right. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Ashfaq Ahmed from A Squared Financial Services. Please go ahead. So, very good evening to everyone and, and congratulations, MD sir, ED sirs, and all the vertical heads for an amazingly and a consistent result. So, I have two small questions I have. One is that, uh, especially uh, with regard to your MSME and retail portfolio, because uh, in the last around m more than a year, we have uh, increased our footprints across India in a very calibrated way. So, what sort of boost in the MSME in retail credit? we are expecting because of the increase in our footprints across India, means majority in the in the hinterlands also. And the second is that since we have increased our footprints with, with additional zonal offices, additional branches, obviously it will boost the uh, uh, business. So, and how do we see because of this, the impact on the uh, cost to income ratio? Thank you so much, sir. This uh, MSME and retail, as of now, for the past uh, two years, we are growing at the level of 24 to 25 percent. And uh, uh, MSME, we are expecting around 20 to 22 percent growth rate in coming quarter also. And retail, around 24, 23 to 24 percent is the growth rate we are expecting. And second point is uh, regarding cost to income issues. Branches, yes. Branches, we have, current year, we have opened another than six branches. And another 150 branches permission is already given and, and in the process. So before March, another, this quarter, another 50 to 60 branches will open to end with 2,200 branches by March. And the remaining branches will be opening next year. 
Okay, sir. And on the cost to income ratio, sir, how do we see that gliding? Now, I think uh, 39, 40, that our aim is to keep around the 40,000 cost to income ratio. That uh, we will be able to do that. 40% plus 1%. Yes, yes, yes. And sir, one small question, very strategic question, like if you see uh, uh, in the MSME and retail, majority of the transactions that are happening on the ground is uh, uh, not the, uh, the from because of the credit formation right now. It is because of the balance transfer that is happening, that means the customers are moving from one bank to the another every six months. So how do we uh, put ourselves, I uh, mean, on this, uh, what is our strategy so that uh, we can uh, grab the majority of the pie that is shifting from one bank to, near, to the another. Especially in the MSME, it has been the trend of lately for the last around a year and a half that even for 50 pesa, 25 pesa uh, dips, uh, the customers are moving from one bank to the another. So what is our strategy to maintain uh, the uh, MSME book, consistent MSME book? This is just a strategic question I have. Yeah, Ashwati, as you have asked, no? Uh, I'm Ashish Fande here. So, very good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. So, as you have asked about MSME growth and retail, so you had one more thing in mind, like, you know, that when we are increasing the branches, so how, you know, the growth. So, MSME has already explained, and this is very clearly told you, that how we are going to do the growth from the MSME retail. And even the agriculture outside Maharashtra with this new footprints. Now you wanted uh, the cost to income ratio, certainly you feel probably that with the increase in budget there will be more than the expenses. But uh, let me tell you very clearly that your bank is expanding with the very clearly. The hub and your voice is not audible, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, so I think hub and spoke model. So where we have only one branch mainly, and then we are having either BC and the CSP model to serve the customer. So that is a very cost-effective one. Secondly, the bank is, has also looked the entire processes we are reviewing it. So wherever with technology we can reduce the cost. So that is also taking place across the various, uh, you know, the functions in the bank. So that is why cost to income 40% plus minus 1%. Now your third question was the MSME in retail. So what you are like, you know, probably perceiving is that there is a huge uh, balance, now, sir, actually. balance transfer. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, like balance transfer is going on. But actually we, we are perceiving differently if you see even the various credit rating agencies and various uh, research reports. See, the, the demand is very welcome. If you take the housing itself and both vehicle loan, particularly the EV segment, the, the, the demand which is coming in is very, very quite huge. So what we are doing that, you know, the, the Bank of Maharashtra has also fine-tuned it various policies where, you know, the DSA fine-tuned in the specific areas, specific locations, and also Bank has identified along 15 clusters so I would not say the cluster scheme, basically. That is also in place. But then specifically focus with mid-corporate branches and the corporate finance branches, where we are targeting location-wise. And we are trying at each location, like maybe, I should say, like, you know, the tiles, maybe a cluster, maybe a textile can be clustered. There are three to four clusters. If you take textile, which is Bhilwada, Tirupur, then engineering, Goyambatur is there, Richel Karanji again in the textile. So if you take uh, the bank is very clearly like 300 to 400 crore, I for these clusters specifically at each location. So not only the balance transfer, balance transfer is yes, the bank is having very much competitive edge because of the interest rate. So if you see that the interest rate of interest in the home loan is also one of the lowest. So two, three mm -hmm. projects are very competitive. So we do have a competitive advantage and the balance transfer there, but then demand is also very much picking up which bank is catering with specific tie-ups, with a specific approach, focus approach, and the locational approach. See, I would like to add, uh, Vijay Kumar, here, yeah, regarding Amartya, you asked specific question that oh, only the piles are shifting. Yes, I do agree, but we are also in the market, that we also have a I mean, scheme called Dharpa Pati. So we tend, you know, continue to focus on the customers who left a few years before. Uh, I mean, I mean, four or five years before, we are bringing them by giving, you know, when, uh, re, uh, market related demand, attractive rate of interest and returns. Our strength is now that improvement in that which you are focusing. And focus, suppose we identified, you know, major centers that 
we are giving a thrust for improving in the particular cluster. Through, through that, also we are improving MSME. If you look at the MSME, there are three aspects, which only micro, small, and medium. We have gone a very, I a mean, huge uh, shift, a huge increase in the portfolio of micro. All our banks, all our branch, the uh, and models are doing micro now. Uh, with align with the national priorities, meet me a Mudra or a PM Stand Up India or even PM Swanali. Uh, we have been focusing, so we are in align with the you know, uh, national priorities objective. Uh, that is the reason why the MSME growth is uh, uh, no robust, and we continue to focus on this. Agreed, sir. Perhaps uh, my compliment to your tech is perhaps the best in the industry, I would say, right now. Thank you. Thank you. And many congratulations, sir, for answering all the questions. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Akash Jain from Echcon Global Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on a very good set of numbers. My questions are regarding the co-lending book. What is the size of the current co-lending book and uh, what is the target to increase it? Yeah. Uh, uh, at present, uh, total loan book size in uh, co-lending is around 500 crore. Uh, we have developed our software. So once that is stabilized, we take it. Uh, we will take it forward, sir, on much larger scale. Okay. And are we in talks with uh, NBFCs to uh, increase this book? Yes, sir. We regularly have discussion with all the stakeholders in this regard, sir. Okay. And also on the gold loan book, what is the size of the gold loan book and what is the bank strategy to increase it? Now the gold loan balance of standing is around 6,000 crores and uh, and gold loan is growing at the level, level of around 30 to 40 percent. Okay, and uh, uh, what is the target uh, for this book? So target is given to the branches to reach by 8,000 crores. March, I think we may be able to reach to seven to seven thousand five hundred by March. Sorry to interrupt, sir. We missed on the number. Can you please repeat it? Yes. Uh, target to the branches is given around seven thousand five hundred crores by the March end. So we may be able to do that. Four okay. loan book. And what is the yield that we are getting on this book? Yield is around the seven point nine zero to eight percent. Okay. And also in last quarter we had talked about using the excess SLR. So I think it was around 18,000 crore as on last quarter. So yes. what is the excess SLR as of now and what has been utilized so far? As of now, only 3 to 4 percent is excess SLR is there. Balance we have already utilized. That is why we have not raised much funds through deposits and thereby deposits come uh, stabilized. So another 5,000 to 6,000 crore excess SLR we may be able to utilize through uh, increasing the CD ratio. Okay, and CD ratio we have talked about, I think, increasing to 80%. So yes. that number now we are uh, sticking to. Now it is 75%, another 3 to 4 percent we may be able to increase that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next follow-up question from the line of Ashok Achmera from Achcon Global Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the giving this opportunity again. Of course, a uh, lot of clarity has come, you know, after the deliberations with my other colleagues. Uh, and, but, uh, sir, I would uh, uh, touch again this uh, raising the uh, capital of 1,000 crore through equity. Uh, Sir, now, of course, our uh, share prices are firming up and it has come to a very good level, almost about, I think, 1.75 to book uh, or maybe it may reach to maybe two times of the book. But uh, uh, when our uh, capital adequacy is already 17.5% and we are having a very good profitability, and in any case, it doesn't help uh, uh, as far as your CD ratio is concerned, uh, what is the basic purpose of uh, raising this 1,000 crore as an equity now, just to take advantage of the uh, rising share prices or anything else is there? Sir? You know that as per the SEBI guidelines, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to reduce the government's share reduce 75%. 
So partly for this purpose, uh, we are coming with the uh, equity issue of equity share capital. capital. And you, saw the, you, you know that uh, we are having the uh, gro growth of advanced 20 to 25% we are planning. For yeah. that next year, we require the capital. So for that, uh, we are uh, going to uh, raise the equity share capital. So from 90.797%, it uh, might just sir, that it will not remain 90 point seven once you increase your advance by 20 to 21 percent. So for the at the time you require the capital. Okay, the government holding. Uh, yeah, government will down, to, down by only, 4 to 5 percent, percent. Three or, only by three or four percent. I think. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, will yes. Come yes. down with that. Okay, yes. sir. Uh, my one question, which was there last time also, which was he remained unanswered. Uh, was that note number 12, the accounts acquired 1,916 crore at 24.91 tangible security. I just wanted to know the quality of these accounts which are required uh, with such a low percentage of the uh, tangible security. What are these accounts and uh, uh, after having acquired, is there any, any, any stress or anything has been seen in last uh, couple of months on these accounts? I will tell you, uh, good evening, Mr. Ajmera. I am Sanjay Rudra. These yeah, accounts are right. basically, basically about, uh, related to the securitized asset which we have purchased from other NBFC. These are basically pertaining to MFI. MFI loans are not considered as a secured asset in our book. So we have classified these assets under the uh, unsecured category. Mostly these are pertaining to that only. And here, when we are you know, going for the pool buyout, we go for the uh, loss estimation also. And uh, as per our book, it is loss estimation given by most of the NFI is below uh, 3%, but it is basically in the range of 1 to 1.5%, which we are observing as on date for the last so many quarters. So the NPA percentage in this book is very low. And the returns are very good. So going forward, uh, are we continuing the same uh, trend? Uh, like it becomes to almost about, I think uh, uh, this is uh, 1,916 is a good amount uh, during the uh, quarter. So are we going to keep the same trend uh, or uh, we have reached to certain level now and we don't yeah. want to end it much? Yeah. I will explain here that see, these are the MFI loans, which are the maximum uh, duration of the loan is between one year to 15 months only. Because they are giving for 24 months, then there is a holding period is there. So effectively it is coming in our book in a period of 12 months to 15 months. So we are acquiring this pool, but the repayments are equally fast. Uh, most of the loans are repaid within a period of 18 months. So, uh, so these are the acquisitions. But outstandings are always uh, much lower than what is acquired during the year. Quarter. Uh, thank you, sir. This uh, now, since we have already, uh, as as a discussion was going on, that we are already on the net NP of uh, 0.47%, and whether net to net uh, the recovery from the account, which are totally written off, uh, will come either as a reversal of provision or as a profit to the book. So naturally, I mean, do we re need to have any further provision? Uh, so, what what do we have in mind about that ad hoc provision of 1200 crore, which we have on the COVID uh, account, uh, developing the COVID situations in future? So, do we have any plan to even make use uh, some part of that even March uh, for the whole year ending uh, to so that no further provisioning as such uh, net net is required in the March and we can have a bumper profit, uh, you know, in the books. Any idea on the any? Uh... Uh, as of now, nothing is uh, given by the board. Board is uh, last uh, quarter also at the board level they have discussed, and the Reserve Bank of India level also. Then only the third wave started somewhere here and there. Then they told that yeah. we will wait and see. Yes, yes. and uh, but of course it uh, finally it has to come to the books as a profit, and it will come to capital or profitability. It has to happen that. Sir, now this uh, just a couple of on credit side. Uh, what is our position on uh, direct uh, lending for onward lending to the priority sector to uh, uh, NBFCs? Are uh, have we reached to that particular level? Are we considering them still? Uh, second, second is uh, our corporate book has again started growing well. So uh, uh, there was a excuse me. Hello. Hello. 
no uh, actually can you hear me yes yes we can hear please carry on uh, uh some color was given uh, that uh, i think uh, the gm credit uh, that infrastructure and something can we be little more specific on that no, we have uh, we have board approved the level is given up to 8 to 9% of the total advances we can go in bfc but we have gone only 5 to 6% there is gap is there 3 to 4% of the total advances but the very cautious way, cautiously we have gone for that and now presently we have gone for some of the accounts basically corporate is for some of the pharma sector or some petroleum sector and some aviation aviation means not this type of uh, the uh, aviation sector per se it is for development of uh, airports it's all of highly rated double and double accounts we have gone for that and some account some amount is gone to ndfc also 2000 to 3000 crore but keeping 5 to 6% of the total advances we have kept it for ndfc yeah ashok in particularly manufacturing we are looking more as a bank in focus we are exposed to the request you to come closer to the speaker phone and speak yeah actually we are looking you know more of a manufacturing sector in pharma or maybe a textile or maybe even the engineering goods and uh, what we are looking is that uh, should be an export more so the bank is focusing to augment its even feeder income so that's the reason that we are focusing more on these ventures uh particularly with like you know the pharma textile uh, maybe in some of the things which we have seen the glass is doing very well uh, industry and in some of the places and uh, particularly in uh, some of the location we have seen even the etc is also doing somewhere better slightly so these are some of the sectors which we are looking apart from the infra and as such uh, the forex part we are import export are more and where uh, the good working capital and the manufacturing sector is the focus what are your views on uh, uh, auto 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 ancillary the auto ancillary too particularly ev side okay, we are open for that uh, and i think that uh, our uh, export growth rate was this uh, part of the matter it is around 40 to 45% for the current year the export is doing well and uh, the area bank has not had in that much export area and medical devices medical equipments that type of area even hospital sector we are uh, yes. uh, so wide range of area not the specific area yes a so very wide range my my last question uh, sir is on uh, on treasury again that how now where do we stand so you you have already given the idea that uh, as per the rbi i mean what we can infer is there can be another 25 to maximum i think 25 because 35 basis already came 60 was expected total so if that is the peak comes to another 25 basis point uh, does it uh, uh, make any change in our dynamics in our uh, our, our uh, we are working or uh, everything is fine we have we are we are capable of taking care of that Yes, yes. everything that is what first itself i told that uh, to one that 10 basis point change has come it will not change any dynamics so another 25 or 50 basis point comes also it is not going to much impact yes. thank you very much sir and all the best to you all uh, thank you we are very very happy with uh, your working and the results sir. thank you thank you thank you we have the next question from the line of franklin moras from equitis wealth advisory please go ahead uh yeah so i joined a bit late in the queue so sorry if this question has already been answered uh, i wanted to know what is your total uh, write off book total write off books around 18000 crores so this is uh, this this is which is already uh, part of uh, your book but uh, it has uh, not yet gone out of the books right so it is uh, it is already written off in the books and it is it is not in the books actually but uh, recoverability is concerned legally it is recoverable and we are recovering also so this quarter we have recovered around 200 crore and next to quarter as our gm uh, recovery is already told that expectation is around 500 crore recovery for next quarter i, I, I make it more uh, clear i make it very thin for example see 18000 crores 
It is written out from the financial research we have, we have published today. But this 18,000 goods very much in the branches of our bank. And our branch at the field level, they are day in, day out, they are focusing on recovery. And the target for recovery is also on the basis of the outstanding line in the branch book. But publication, publication of research, it is not there. Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, what part of this book uh, would uh, probably uh, you know go under MARCL? Maybe in the next uh, one year or two years. Uh, it is around three thousand crore, two thousand seven hundred crore to be precise. This is already transferred. No, no, no. The process will start now. First, will okay. transfer in this month. It is uh, expected to be now. The process has started. Okay. And what could be the maybe timeline for uh, transferring of this three thousand crores? No, it is, see, uh, it is a shortlisted account. Now, certain accounts will get finalized in a process, and in a process, it will happen. So, uh, it keeps uh, dynamic at least always. It keeps changing also uh, with the circumstances. So, at present, at least we expect the one account in the first quarter definitely will get transferred, and then in the two countries. Okay. And could you also share some insights in terms of, you know, what is happening at the NARCL level? Because the last year is when uh, you know they uh, started but so far we have not uh, seen any uh, you know accounts getting resolved ah uh, yes the nrcl actually there was a delay because of that approval of bank guarantee which are srs are given which is backed by the government guarantee that approval uh, nrcl was to be received now uh, very recently in the last week only uh, the government has given the approval so that that process has now started now everything will happen uh, fast uh, the account transfer will start happening now. Any any quantum that uh, is being targeted, uh, maybe in the next uh, six to nine months? Uh, see, for um, our bank concern, uh, we expect at least uh, uh, in the first quarter, one account uh, is definitely, this Q, Q4 one account is definitely going to be transferred. Uh, remaining account will follow in the next year. Okay, okay. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Shri A.S. Rajiv, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer for Closing Remarks. Over to you, sir. So, thank you so much for having uh, one of our discussion of this. And uh, afterwards also, any of the, anybody having any kind of queries or anything, we will be in touch with you and our CFO will be open to give any clarification or any figures, whatever required. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Bank of Maharashtra, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.